Welcome to episode 574 of the Aussie Tech Heads. We've got the two Australia's uh, two top podcasters again, Jason Will and a Klingon called Jordan. How you doing, Will? <laughs> hey, mate. Thanks, mate. Always wanted to be a Klingon. And Jordan's in the middle there somewhere. <laughs> Just in the middle. Klingon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How are things going up in uh, cane toad country? Very good. A lot of cane toads. Uh, <laughs> finally... Dancing. That's the first time today in nearly two weeks we haven't had rain. Wow. That's been ridiculous. We're supposed to be getting some of it around the next week or so. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, we, won't, it's... we won't ask about Melbourne because it's like four seasons in one day there, so probably a bit Isn't of it? <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing unusual. That's just the way it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are things going with you, Jordan? Uh-oh. Yeah, good. Yep. Um, I've just turned into a blank screen, but yeah, everything's ig- good. Ignore that. Ignore the Will's man behind the curtain. It. It's fine. <laughs> he just pulled the curtain on me. He didn't want me to speak. Oh, really don't, break great. The, don't break the fourth wall. Don't break the fourth wall. We're professionals, <laughs> damn it. We, um, many, many years ago before I started in, in band singing and stuff, I used to be a karaoke host, believe it or not. And uh, we, we've got a karaoke reunion coming up this weekend with all the oh, hosts and DJs from all the shows from about 15 or 20 years ago. I used ago. to love doing karaoke. I did it about every second week when I lived in Sydney for several months. Guns yeah. and Roses. Um, but you were hosting it or going out and singing? No, I was singing. <laughs> Guns and Roses. Guns I and Roses, it. yeah. They said, all my friends said, you should only do that after you had about six beers because then you yeah. get the crappy <laughs> voice for yeah. Axel yeah. Rose. Yep. It's so but, true. Karaoke should be for people who are not caring in the world about being something that they aren't. You get so yeah. many die karaoke people, and I don't want to offend any karaoke fans out there, but they go out and they sing every week the same song, and they love it, and it's great, and it's good for them. Yep. But I, I still believe that karaoke is meant to be for the person who can't sing and just wants to dance around and have a bit of fun. And yeah. Be, <laughs> that's, why I, and that's why I love karaoke. Themselves. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's the main reason I do karaoke. I'm, I can't sing to save my life, but for some reason you bring out the karaoke and you know, give me uh, grease lightning or something, and I'm set. Absolutely, that's <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what Everybody it's loved it when we did uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, I had I one, one when the guitar comes on. I had one of my friends who grows his hair down past his shoulders come on, does the head banging <laughs> bit from yeah. Wayne's World, and then he just walks straight off again. The whole place yeah. is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we had inflatable guitars for that. Oh, cool. <laughs> inflatable blow up ones. And we used to just, you know, knock everyone out with them halfway through yep. the song. <laughs> but that's what it was about, you know, you just get up there and have a bit of fun. There's a lot of ca- serious karaoke people that go out and make it serious. And then the fun people come into the same show and see the serious people. Yep. And it, it kind of makes them hard. It makes it hard for them to get up and have a bit of fun because they're expected yeah. to be serious. So. I just want to be applauded by a lot of drunk people who are tone yeah. deaf. It works for me. Yeah. <laughs> I did a, uh, I hosted a karaoke show. I haven't done one in, like I said, probably 15 years. The other day for a staff party at a venue yeah. that I play at. And they said, oh, can you come and bring some karaoke and, and we'll do it. And we just pulled out some YouTube videos. And we had a blast. Yeah. Absolute blast. None of them could sing. Not uh, one of them. And there was just alcohol laid on and food and everything. It was a staff party. And they fun. just got blotted and sang everything they could. So <laughs> much fun. Aussie Tech Heads is brought to you by ATH Web Hosting at athwebhosting.com.au. The servers operate on SSD drives. You get immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, easy install of WordPress, Joomla, and Drew Powell. And this week, we've got a few uh, emails being sent in that Glenn's added to the notes. He apologised for not being able to make it this week, but he's got something more important to do. So was a beauty we, sleep we or care about like you. <clears throat> we care about you and about the show more than Glenn does, obviously. So we're here. And that's what <laughs> he's, matters probably, he's probably just hiding his upsetness about how well your show's doing with the yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah that's absolutely. True. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he needed his beauty sleep or I can't remember what the excuse was now. <laughs> we got an email from uh, Marcus. Uh, he was talking about an uh, uh, app that Glenn talked about last week, uh, Paprika Recipe app. He says it's a great app. He's been using it for years. Definitely worth the seven ninety nine. It'll sync your recipes between devices and it beats having to write out recipes and look at screenshots and stuff. 
Uh, Black Widow on YouTube says, you guys are professional at what you do. You should have a million subs in a TV show. Well, of course we should. We should. <laughs> if it was any other country you except Australia, we would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't You're not reading the us. show notes from your Bitcoin show, are you, by any chance? No. You haven't got Even... us confused with like the, the Twitch network, so the Twit network or something, have you? <laughs> yeah. Even Good Game couldn't keep going, so <laughs> it's, it's, we blame Australia. Um, and uh, we've got a news story we can start off with. John Dory emailed in, a.k.a. Dave. And uh, he says, oh, what's happened to the room type environment whilst recording? I used to enjoy that, but uh, he's given a newsworthy story for tonight, so he might start with that one. Two Bureau of Meteorology employees are being investigated by the Australian Federal Police for allegedly running an elaborate operation involving the use of the Bureau's powerful computers to <laughs> mine cryptocurrencies. So that's a crossover the shows. <laughs> Don't cross the streams. Cross Federal Police. Yeah. Federal police officers executed a search warrant at the Bureau's Collins Street headquarters in Melbourne on Wednesday last week, February 28. The officers spoke to two IT employees, according to people with knowledge of the raid. The rest of the Bureau's IT team was ushered into a conference room and told to wait while the employees were questioned. At least one of the employees who was questioned by the AFP has since gone on leave. Leave, in quotes. <laughs> Paid or unpaid. <laughs> yeah. No charges have been laid, but the investigation is continuing. While mining cryptocurrency is not illegal, the use of the Bureau's computers to carry out the process could be an illegal use of government resources because all the other uses of the government resources are totally legal. Yeah, that's it. So much more legal. <laughs> <laughs> a it's, spokesman... Yep. You're right. A spokesman for the Bureau declined to answer any questions citing the ongoing investigation, as did the AFP. If employees were mining cryptocurrencies, they may have been using the Bureau's computers to either avoid significant electricity bills involved in mining, or they may have been taking advantage of the Bureau's powerful computational power, said Chris Berg from Ahmed's Blockchain Innovation Hub. Well, clever, good on them. You know, I remember we talked about, I think, on our... Um, Aussie Tech Crypto, a show you can find on uh, any podcast app, including iTunes. You can find it on YouTube and also AussieTechCrypto.com, minor plug, <clears throat> about uh, when when they had the um, city at home and, uh, and folding at home. There was a guy at a university in Queensland or something, and he installed that on all of the computers and got kicked out of his job because they found out all the computers were doing that. Well, I mean, the mining with the government computers, I mean, is that any different than I've heard unofficial stories, of course, because they're unofficially from other students, but um, of uni students setting up the, the server rooms and the university computer rooms to do the same thing. Like, yep. and during the school holidays, whenever, well, during the, you know, the term holidays, whatever uni, however they work at uni, but they have down periods. And so, and actually... It happens to be a couple of the heads of IT who are doing it. Um, and yeah, when they got the down periods, they actually set it up to mine, to mine stuff like that. So uh, it's technically not illegal because, I mean, it's, they're doing legal activities. It's not like they're doing anything illegal, but yeah. I, I, yeah. Eh, I they're mean, not it's hosting not, wares there like we used to be back in the old days. It's not like Bureau of Meteorology knows what's going on anyway. So I mean, <laughs> no, they're just guessing. You know, just they pick up the magic eight ball and go... Is it going to rain today? Outlook not so good. Oh, it must be going to rain. Well, see, part of the problem is up here, we haven't had accurate weather forecasts from the Bureau of Meteorology for a while because the Stapleton radar, which is the biggest radar in the area, it's the high-res one, the one that does the Doppler, does everything, it got struck by lightning six times in two weeks. Oh. And they, every time, it was right over Christmas, it started um, like two days before Christmas. And then it got struck like three times between Christmas and New Year's. And they patched it up and patched it up and patched it up just to get this thing going through the holidays. And as soon as the holidays finished, they went, that's it. We're pulling it down for like six or eight weeks. We need to like <laughs> completely rebuild this whole thing. <laughs> they need to have one so, of those rubber strips like you have dangling off the back of the car <laughs> to stop you getting car sick, right? Uh, I think it's probably a little more in, involved than that. <laughs> but, I this has been going on for for a long time. I remember back yeah, in the nineties, the first IRC server that I used to hang out with, <clears throat> hang out on was called Jello at University of Queensland, and uh, you know a lot of really old people who used to hang out on IRC will be, oh, that's right, Jello. <laughs> Whatever happened to that? 
Well, they discovered that the administrator of that IRC server was using one of the university computers and the university bandwidth to host the IRC server. So yeah, they, apparently the um, university was like, where's all our bandwidth going? Why are we getting charged so much? Because bandwidth was so much more expensive back well, then than it is now. They were probably on ISDN too, which was yeah. like the thing back then. Like we complain about, you know, ADSL costs, but ISDN was like, was it five, I think? Um phone lines tied together or something like that and yeah, yeah the, the, the costs were absolutely insane for isdn but it was great <laughs> yeah they did an investigation they're like hang on it's this computer what's running on what's irc irc okay shut it down <laughs> we did um the university of lismore happened to be hosting um uh quake so quake server and quake oh, games okay. for quite a while too yeah we figured out <laughs> that with the internet speed and the 56k modems, the session limits were cut to two hours, and they'd boot you off the they'd boot you off the connection after you use the uni connection. But we figured yep. out if you because the connection was at the university where their their infrastructure was, we could make we could break Quake down and other software into floppy disk size chunks, and That's the two hour true. session limit was exactly enough time to download one floppy at a time. So if you want to download <laughs> Quake or any other program we had on there, you just had to log in like six times and get the six floppies and then recompile it. <laughs> is, this, is this old fight geeks? I mean, this is, yeah, I was about to say, I think we did a show about this, didn't we? <laughs> oh, man. How far, how far back does your computer experience go, Jordan? You're back in the 90s and stuff with the old uh, 8-bit computers? Um, probably not. No, I, I was a bit, uh, you know, I grew up living on a farm. I didn't sort of really meet a computer and probably until, yeah, probably late nineties. I, I would say 98, not 95. Like operates. IBM compatible or something? Um, win 98 is what I yep. mean, not the year. So I, I probably don't really have a lot of history much further back wow. than that. You're, you're, you're introduced into PCs at about I'm, the worst possible time. I <laughs> yeah. do remember. I at do least remember, it wasn't ME. I do remember ME. And uh, it was, that was like the equivalent of Vista pretty much. Multimedia just, edition. Just remember, yeah. Will, on, on the uh, 29th of this month, not only is it my dad's birthday, but the C64 Mini comes out at EB Games, yeah. so I'll be heading down there to grab one of them. And then pre-orders are already sold out. Pre-orders are sold out before I had a chance to even log on to the website. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're pre-ordering this now. Okay, JB. Sold Gone. out. You, you, you what? <laughs> what did you have, it's three? <laughs> it's like Dick Smith Electronics all over again, isn't it? Where the staff oh. would grab everything on sale and hide behind the counter and buy it for their friends and stuff. Yeah, no, that never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. You weren't allowed to do that. No, that's, no. that's <clears throat> that never happened to Harvey Norman either. No. <laughs> Have you got any stories there, Jordan? Um, I've got quite a few, but it's just a matter of picking out something, uh, something good and something. Uh, how about this one? I'm, I'm with Will on the uh, Apple thing. Maybe I've got an Apple story. Uh, <laughs> Apple, you'll, Apple you'll, is, get, you'll get hate mail don't worry about it <laughs> yeah, Apple is considering removing the notch from its devices in 2019 <clears throat> have you heard that one? have we talked about that yet? what? no, no Apple is uh, thinking about removing its uh, notch design from its iPhone according to reports the report from the Korean tech site ET News says Apple is planning to improve um, obstacles such as the 3D sensor and camera module that were obstructing the way for the full screen the change will yeah. occur next year on its OLED displays. A representative spoke to ET News saying that Apple decided to get rid of the notch design starting from 2019 models and is having a discussion with relevant companies. It seems that the Apple is or it seems that Apple is uh, planning to implement full screen that is more complete to the iPhone. Uh, a few smartphone manufacturers such as Huawei and Asus are also implementing the notch on their devices copying Apple. This move could be Apple's way of once again differentiating itself from the rest of the competition. The notch has caused a lot of outrage from users and even some analysts, analysts <laughs> uh, blaming the notch for lower than expected iPhone sales. No word on the size, shape or resolution of the notch free smartphone, so watch this space for more information 
Apple just wasn't the first with that, though. Essential phone, Android phone came out with a notch in the top. Mm. Apple used the same uh, method they did. But I did see recently there was it's a... It's funny that, isn't it, that Apple An Android to... f- to copy, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I mean, it happens so rarely you don't even notice when it happens. Yeah. I've never seen it. <laughs> People often say that's a load of a load of you know a lot of a load of bull crap that that you know Apple would never steal anybody's ideas or take ideas from nah. someone. Their entire company ecosystem wasn't based on anybody else's concepts at all. No, <laughs> iTunes wasn't somebody else's app that they bought and then renamed. And you know, used... like everyone's been saying about the facial recognition, you know, Android already had it. They may not have had a great version of it and Apple may have improved it. Will's been using it for like the five years, years haven't you? Yeah, it's been, yeah. It's been on my phone since, well, since I got my first Note, which Note, the Note 1 back in you know, five or six, seven, six years ago now. So, it's, uh, it's not new. And facial, facial recognition is not new. Uh, Snapchat, that's the whole reason they invented, they invented Snapchat filters was so people would use facial recognition so that it could get cleverer. Um, it's the same as that. Remember, I did a couple of podcasts just for fun on, I think it was Talkback Tech, where I had that uh, software install where you had a face tracking and you could be a bear or a Yeah, Logitech or cameras had that. Yeah, and, I mean, that goes back 10 years. That's, that's nothing new. It's just... And I did, like, it's App, just Apple, Apple decided Apple to go... Very, yeah. yeah Apple they decided... Good marketing This is campaign. our brilliant thing that we just invented and nobody else has ever used. I did see recently a... um much better, aren't they? An yeah. Android phone that has the full the full face of it is a screen from end, edge to edge to edge to edge. Yep. And for the camera, you press a button and a little pops up. pop-up me- module comes up with a camera on there with a selfie. Yeah. Apple wouldn't do that because they don't want things popping up and attachments and things that are not just the slab. But I thought that was an interesting I th- way. Of, I think it's know. a great idea. I have an issue with that, though, uh, just how fragile that's going to be. It's either, in a very short period of time, going to jam shut or it's going to pop open your pocket and it's going to snap off and I can just see that's you know it's it's going to happen very very quickly <laughs> I think um, but it's a great idea I mean it's a good way to get you know as much usable space as possible on the screen wait wait for the what Apple X about... to have it the Apple X Plus isn't it that's the next <laughs> one they're talking about isn't it plus, plus. plus size yeah. it's the next size up they're going to make it larger so they can charge well, what do you for reckon the sales? Do you yeah. reckon that's true? That's right in saying that their sales have dropped because of the notch. Do you reckon people? Don't I don't like think they it? care. People want I... to have the notch because then when somebody looks at their phone, it's obvious that they've got a iPhone X, the expensive one. If if or it didn't have the notch, no. it's not quite so. They, they like to done. differentiate like that. Yeah, I think the only people who really care are Minecraft players. <laughs> they could have made the notch better, though. They could have made it you know, sort of blend in a bit better. It's pretty, you know, square and right there, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. This this is from a company that prides itself pretty. on on aesthetically pleasing designs and Perfection. concepts and unusual, you know, unusual design. I mean, look at when, yeah. the, when the first iPhones came out and the first iPads came out. You have to admit, as much, think, whatever you think about them, they were made of aluminium, they were a nice design, they were rounded. At the time, all the Android phones were plastic, they were square, they were clunky. So you had these really nice phones. They and were they really go, beautiful phones. Yeah, and then they go, let's just, yeah, there we go. That, that's perfect. Yep, there you go. <laughs> square and clunky looking notch. They it all fell down once Steve Jobs was gone. They could have um, made it round or something and something. sort of blended it. They could have made, made it, it look but, prettier. Yeah. They should have used the old apple, the old apple shape. The, the, yeah. the uh, you know, we've all the we've old... all heard what Eric thinks of Tim Cook taking over. <laughs> Man, they could yeah. have had a dome on the, a, a dome over the top of the phone with the camera and everything in it. <laughs> phone dome. The, a little, really a little bump. The, the three sixty <laughs> yeah. degree thing. You put it face down, and you get the whole three sixty thing happening. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's yeah. your next phone, Apple. Thank you. I'll take all this now. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> Trademark, How copyrighted, about, and painted it. Pa- painted? Pa- about, painted. 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 <laughs> How about you for a story, Will? Uh, well, speaking of um, of uh, Android and all that entails, I guess, uh, artificial intelligence uh, has proven that it can exhibit less than desirable behaviours and can seemingly distinct, dis- distinctify? That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> distinct uh, humans. AI like cheats. Making can it show- up, eh? Oh, I should proofread these before. I really haven't learned my lesson, have I? Um, I tried to. It can show bias. 
and it could even lie to you. Now, apparently, it's subject to random bouts of laughter. Amazon on Wednesday acknowledged that its voice-activated assistant, Alexia, has been randomly laughing when it shouldn't. The acknowledgement came after several Amazon customers in the past were spontaneously... Weeks reported spontaneous laughter coming from Alexia-enabled devices. The internet collectively balked at the decidedly creepy reports. One, one tweet said, Lying in bed, about to fall asleep when Alexia on my Amazon Echo Dot lets out a very loud and creepy laugh. There's a good chance I get murdered tonight. <laughs> As Amazon representative told CNET, ZNet sister site, who cares, um, that the company was aware of the problem and trying to fix it. Later in a statement to ZDNet, CNET sister site, who cares? <laughs> Amazon chalked cork, the issue up to Amazon chalked the issue up to a glitch and said it's working on a solution. In rare circumstances, Alexia can mistakenly hear the phrase "Alexia laugh." We are changing the phrase to be "Alexia can you laugh," which is less likely to have false positives, and we're disabling the short utterance "Alexia laugh." We're also changing Alexia's response from simply laughter to "Sure, I can laugh," followed by laughter. <clears throat> so. So Don't Will's worry. just sent off everybody's Alexa who's listening to this podcast. I did it completely innocently. I completely forgot that was a thing. Oh, dude. <laughs> Lucky I told you. <laughs> yeah, after, you thanks feel, for that. Yeah. <laughs> now you feel bad, don't you? It's like it's like when you say Xbox on. I don't know, you know, it's just one of those off. things that happens Xbox sometimes. Off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Google, got- find the nearest pub. <laughs> no, not actually do that. <laughs> Alexa purchased a dollhouse. Did you see that on the news? Somebody did that uh, on American again? television and everybody's... No, 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 that was a couple of months ago. Do but, people um... still have that set up? Yeah, it's default. What, the... Oh, I guess it would be... That's why from Amazon, OK it? Yeah. Google and Hey Siri is good. Alexa yeah. something is bad. You need like a Hey Alexa you know, or Yo you know, Alexa. Yeah, trigger word. But you can change it, can't you? I'm sure you can change the trigger Nobody's word. Nobody's going to do that. Too much trouble. No. Like, you I do bought it on a your... thing and I want it to work. That's all I care about. Because I know you can do it on your on your Android phone. You just go into settings and just tell it to change whatever trigger word. You yeah. can make it sound. You can make it whatever you want. It doesn't got to be a word. It doesn't care. Um, one of my mates has got his set up to click his fingers. He clicks his fingers and it turns on, which is actually, I think that's pretty cool because he clicks his fingers, the screen comes on, it talks, I'm like, okay, that's like a real butler right there. <laughs> <laughs> is that my music or yours? Uh, yours, because I yeah, don't have nothing any. Here. <laughs> the right to repair yeah. battle has come to Silicon Valley's home state. Wednesday, a state assembly member announced that California would become the 18th state in the country to consider legislation that would make it easier to repair your electronics. The Right to Repair Act will provide consumers with the freedom to have their electronic products and appliances fixed by a repair shop or service provider of their choice. A practice that was taken for granted a generation ago, but is now becoming increasingly rare in a world of planned obsolescence. The announcement had been rumoured for about a week, but became official Wednesday. The bill would require electronics manufacturers to make repair guides and repair parts available to the public and independent repair professionals and would also make a diagnostic software and tools that are available to authorised and first-party repair technicians available to independent companies. Right to repair legislation is considerable momentum this year. 18 states have introduced it, and several states have held hearings about the topic. In each of these states, big tech companies such as Apple, Microsoft, John Deere, and AT&T, and trade associations they're associated with, have heavily lobbied against it, claiming that allowing people to fix their things would cause safety and security concerns and <laughs> dramatic loss in profits. Oh, no, sorry, it doesn't say that here, does it? <laughs> uh, have, Thus far, have, companies have been unwilling to go on the record to explain the specifics about how these bills would be dangerous or would put device and consumer security in jeopardy because it doesn't. Hmm. That's it. <sighs> Have you seen that guy on uh, he's he streams on um, YouTube? It's he's in the he's in the Bronx summer, I think. He streams live on YouTube and he does um, Apple and iPhone or Apple products predominantly. Um, he repairs them live on air, and oh, okay. um, he's he's Jack of Apple's built-in redundancy, and he shows you he physically he's got a um, 
a really high quality microscope that he uses when he's working on stuff but it's got a camera mounted into it and he live streams the camera feed as well and he actually runs over the circuit board and he goes see this component here that's sitting underneath the cpu this is a heat sensitive component this component is designed to fail in two to three years and he actually goes around and apple shut his stream down on several occasions Wow. Um, well, somebody mysteriously has complained about the stream on several occasions. <laughs> um, and it may, it may he, not be. <laughs> he seems to be getting several cease and desist letters from Apple, which, of course, now there's like all his staff now stream, so he's got like 10 live feeds all, at all times happening. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he's saying exactly that. Like, they do corporate repairs, so a company sends in 10 faulty laptops and he fixes them. But for... A, Corporation, that's not too bad. It, it kind of works out. Um, you know, the expense is worth it. But for the average individual, he said, just the built-in redundancy and the, well, the built-in failures that they put into these things, um, it's not worth the average person Random getting their device repaired. Yeah, it, it's... Yeah. And not only that, they're now getting to the point where the only... Well, they used to be able to... Um, plug the phone in with diagnostic software which they bought from Apple to yep. diagnose the fault and find out what the fault was and they could repair the fault. Pull that software so it's no longer available um, oh. on newer devices so they can't get it. The only, co the only thing they can get is they get a Chinese ripped copy from China yep. um, and it's almost right most of the time you know that's the closest they can get because apple's decided no no single person should be able to repair our products yeah you know so is Isn't this it, bill you're jordan, talking about jordan you were saying that you've got a friend who has a guy who does uh, <clears throat> iphone repairs in their shop or something oh yeah yeah down in maryborough but they closed up shop apparently mm. oh okay couldn't do it no probably for the well, same no, reason not the iPhones, just, like, no, i think not for that reason no oh, closed okay. up shop just closed up shop. That was a music shop as well. Um, and I think just retail in general. I'm just doing it tough. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, it, it, it's is to that story. Yeah. Is that story you've got, is that Australian or American? Because I know America was talking about this not long ago. I didn't realize Australia was talking about it. No, I don't think we've got 18 states. It was America. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't entirely listening. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I do you include drunk? Do you include... Through the story too, so that's all right. California <laughs> A. Do you include drunk and sleepless? And <laughs> I think I can manage that in states. Um, More coffee. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I don't think it'll ever happen. Not I mean, it would re well look. Put it this way: they mandated that all mobile devices that are emergency dependent, so phones or anything that can, should be used in an emergency situation, is required to charge via some form of USB connector. And if not, they'll be fined X amount of dollars. Well, Apple just paid X amount of dollars for five or six years because they couldn't be bothered changing that. They wanted to keep their connector. So exactly the same thing's going to happen with this. They're going to say, okay, you must have repairers, ind in independent repairers. Otherwise, we're going to fine you this amount of money. They'll go, okay, here, have some money. Well, we like, should ask, I now, that, now that you're on the show, what's your take on Apple saying... Oh, the old phones, they slow down over time because <laughs> we're trying to save the batteries and it's all for you. It's really good. You need it. It's, um... You're talking... It, the... Will. Yeah, Sorry. the... So I'm just trying to wrap I'm my head around the, the way to, to, uh, to answer it. Look, it's not... The worst part about it is that they've only just acknowledged it. It's not the fact they've been doing it because everybody knows they've been doing it. It's the fact that they've only just acknowledged that they're doing it and they've only acknowledged it in such a way to make it sort of sound like it was an accident, like they never planned for it to happen that way. They never yep. come out and said, hey, we, divide, we, we know that in 12 months' time or 18 months' time, you're going to upgrade and you're going to buy the next product because we got you stuck in our infrastructure so sucked in. They went, oh, yeah, look, it's a side effect of old age. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> no, the phone's two years old. That's not old age. You know, I've got I've got old my old HTCs and Mozarts and stuff floating around here that Bub plays with. But the thing is, they're six, seven, eight years old. They still turn on. They work perfectly fine. And if I wanted to, I could still use it. You know, like yep. they're just ah. Uh, I mean, Apple bugs me at the best of times. But when they do stuff like that, you just like, how does anybody have any sort of 
faith in this company where they're going to go and spend two thousand dollars when the next phone comes out. Yet when the next phone comes out, there's queues around the block three days before it's released. And At least three days. <laughs> you don't get that with Samsung. Like I literally just got a message today from Vodafone. Um, saying that I can pre-order my new Samsung S9 and S9 Plus, which is coming out on the 15th of March. Yep. Cool. I'll just pre-order that, and if I wanted it, I'll just go and pick it up. Like, there's none. Of, you know what You're I mean? You're not like, going to wait outside the Samsung store for a week. It's almost. It's almost. It's almost like yeah. It's like it's a celebrity. It's status. a cult. It's yeah. It's just it's kind of like laid. kind of like cool. It's like Facebook. Yeah. It's like yep. get on a, get on the bandwagon or don't. Um, if you haven't yeah. got one, then, you know. But a lot of people say it's simple. That's why they like it. So, Yep. It, it's funny yeah. that what I don't understand, like, okay, there, there was a, a lot of people who got trapped into the Apple infrastructure early, and I kind of understood it early on. There wasn't a lot of choice. There was Apple who had sort of, a ref, well, as refined as you could, I mean, didn't have things like copy and paste, but effectively a refined infrastructure. It tied in because I pods had been such a thing everybody had itunes libraries that was already established they had all that in place okay i get early on why people went to the iphone um over an android device because androids were clunky they didn't really people have the G1. support there wasn't much going on um yeah i mean i, I had really? a g1 you Apple know came in at the right time <clears throat> they did and i understand that early on why people went over there what i don't understand is why people stay there it doesn't make any sense to me now I have converted a lot of people and they've all converted over and they've all stayed with Android after they switched over. Okay, it's been a pain. They've had to switch iTunes and blah, blah, blah. But once they've realized that how bad the Apple infrastructure actually is and once you get out of it, how much broader the f and how much easier everything is, they tend to be happy with that. Um, Will, are you just but, trying to get hate mail or mm, what? Not trying. I don't need to try. Um, but what the thing I, I don't get, if you're an existing user, okay, fine. You're going to stay with that infrastructure. You've got a lot of courage. You know, I get that. But <laughs> what I don't understand is why the people who are, you know, say this is the first major phone, pay, okay, they've bought, you know, the $50 prepaid phones or they've gone to, you know, cashies and they've paid 100 bucks for a second if I something like that. But for their first major phone purchase... Why are you going, hey, can I have that Apple phone that's $2,000 on a $125 a month plan plus data? Thank because you. Because everyone else is doing it. And it's I'll tell you cool. what, if you ask, if, tell you what, if you are, yeah, that's right. And if you ask, um, it's like I say about the music industry, isn't it? It's cool to be a DJ these days. <laughs> you should all get on the bandwagon with Jace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the. The, uh, as I was trying to say, it, I forgot what I was going to say. It was very interesting. No, I was going to say, cool. I was going to say that, you know, I forgot what I was going to say now. I've lost my train of thought <laughs> talking about Jason and he's DJing. Uh, no, we're, we're, no. we're talking about... Um, uh, infrastructure. The Android infrastructure of Apple. iPhone. <laughs> lost me. It's just no, too I, cool. Yeah. It, was, it was just saying that... It was, no, I was going to say that if you spoke... The amount of Apple people, if you ask them, and, and I've had this happen on a lot of occasions, <clears> you ask them, um, why they have they ever tried Android phone? Any Android phone, mm. Samsung, any, and most of them can't say they have, or no. not most, of them, but a lot of them can't say they have. But they are the first to put Android down. Never even tried it. Yeah, uh, it's probably first complicated. To say that best yeah. never, never tried it. So it's too and, complicated. Uh, and but I've people tried the way. Think of, and I and I and I know which phone I choose. Yeah, and I've tried same it. Same at work. So all our work. All All our work phones are all Apple iPhones. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm the only one there who's got an Android phone in as my phone. Everybody else has iPhones as well. And even the boss the other week, we had to sign some PDF documents to sign send back. So I just sent them to my phone, signed the PDF documents on my phone, then emailed them off to where they had to go. My boss got his iPhone out, had to email the documents to himself, to the work computer, so that he could print them onto the printer, so that he could print them out and then scan, sign them and then scan them back in and then print them. I'm like... He's like, oh, do you want me to do yours? I'm like, dude, I did mine like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> you know, it's like... Well, Steve Jobs said he'll never have a, have a stylist, didn't he? So, Yeah. And then they brought one out for the iPad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Out of the pencil. It's not a stylus. It's, it's the Apple pencil. pencil. <laughs> Got you. It wasn't we a stylus get, at all. We might get more views on the show this week. Yeah. I, the the shows where I rag on Apple always do well. I don't know why. 
People yeah, just love, and the, it's the hate mail I get. That's they the love funny to part hate you, it. don't they? Look, you and, know, and all people... in all, I've got to say, all in all, I love technology, and I love yeah. all devices. And I love Apple. Like my, my, my wife's got Apple, and I've got Android. I don't love Apple, but I don't mind it. I, I use all technology. I think it's each to their own. You know, yeah, you've just got to. Right. We all use what works for us. Fits. Yeah, you've just got to use what fits for you. You know, and that's what I always say. But I don't. Yeah, to have a go. There is so much technology out there. I say, don't be scared to have to, to try. I mean, oh, unless you got a BlackBerry, then you deserve to be laughed at. Um, <laughs> but I mean, as I said, I don't hate Apple. <laughs> I just hate. Made his silly streak. For those I don't who are only listening. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't. And as as I say on the show, to to cover myself, I don't hate Apple. I think a lot of their concepts and a lot of their ideas are useless, okay. and the company themselves <laughs> suck. But a lot of their products, especially the old one, the new ones I really struggle to find merit in. But a lot of their older products, if you wanted a workhorse of a system, if you wanted a video editing system, if you wanted an audio editing system, if you wanted a photo editing system, if you wanted a system designed to do a specific job, there was no better system than an Apple product to do it. Yes. And yeah, I think the problem is... So much, so much more further forward now, can't they all pretty much oh, yeah. do the same thing? They, they can. Know? I think this is the problem. I think Apple... People are still believing that audio and video is better on one thing and you know something well, else is better on another. And To I give you an idea, know. like Pixar, for, for example, um, only used Max for years. That's all they would use because of their processing ability, especially with their 3D animations and stuff like that. And then... Um, they, they slowly started to switch over to Windows and Windows-based stuff because suddenly the Macs weren't offering the value for money. They were paying $20,000 for a Mac when a $5,000 PC would do exactly the same job. And so th- that's and what I mean. Sell, like, yeah, if you want to sell your software on a device that people can afford to, to buy. <laughs> well, it's not only that. Like my, um, Some of the mixes, some of the hardware, some of the stuff that they required to do it, in the later updates the Apple no longer supported it. And they're like, well, okay, now I've got a $20,000 paperweight because I can't use it on the stuff I need to use it on. Mm. You know, so I think that's that's what's hurt them. Look, I, they need to figure out what, what, what are they? Are they a company that's just rehashing five-year-old Android products or are they a company that actually wants to go back to what they used to do and innovate and lead and be on top and be, have the ability to be better than still, everybody else at what they they're do? Still, they're still the most, wealth, most wealthiest, though, aren't they? So. Yeah. They they stopped doing they must be servers. Doing right? They stopped doing good video editing software. Yeah. Well, I used to, yeah, I used to use a really bad example, uh, but and it's a, it's an example either way. But I remember when DVD burners came out, and you know everybody would just. I was always recommended to go out and buy a Pioneer because that was the, the best DVD burner you could get. Yep. yep. And then technology moved that far forward that you could buy really any DVD burner of any brand, and you'd pretty much be light on. Yeah, you could get yeah. light on for, you know, twenty bucks. I remember with pioneers were like nearly a thousand bucks. They were mm. new technology, and you could buy any other brand. The technology did move far enough forward for you to just go and buy any other brand of the same device and pretty yeah. much be home and host. And, and I look at Apple and Mac and all that the same way. We've, we've come so far in the old days recording audio on Mac. Everyone used to say it was great. You'd only ever have that because Pro, Pro Tools. Tools worked worked yeah. on Mac, but Pro Tools now works on Windows as well. You know, like yep. everything's. You know, and then you've got all your video editing and photoshopping and all those things that everyone would say was great on Mac. Like I went and looked at a, a secondary school um, down my way, actually in in Frankston, it was uh, Mount Air, and I went there. And the guy who took us on the tour, he said to us, "Oh, you know, we've got a Mac lab here, and we, if any kids want to do any video editing or audio editing or, or any of that sort of stuff, we've got a, a dedicated Mac lab. One of the only schools around has a dedicated Mac lab for that." And I felt like turning around and saying. Why? Is it Why just are you wasting Mac? the school's no. money? <laughs> Why have a Mac lab just for that? Can't you do? Can't they take photos on the camera and edit them on the Windows PCs that you've already got? You know. Like, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. Like, unless it's kind of a, it's a belief that's been instilled into everybody for so long. I just don't think they know how to believe anything different. Unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> I could no, be wrong. I, I think it's right because you look at as you're saying a lot of the companies who let's take HP for example was for years with the HP LaserJet 2E, the LaserJet printer that every commercial business in the world had. It was bulletproof. It was reliable. It did thousands and thousands and thousands of pages and never complained. 
They were and now you can go and buy a forty dollar laser printer that does exactly the same job. So HP went, okay, well, like, but there's no money in printers now. Let's go and make PCs or whatever. But they've all they've all had their time, but they've all adapted and overcome it. And a lot of them have come back up on top in, in certain areas. Apple adapted to the situation and sort of just flowed with it. They they lost that. Whatever that drive was, and I, I don't think it's Steve Jobs' are solely responsible. It was definitely more than just him doing it. But they had that drive, they had that passion to make what they made the best that they could make it. Now they just have that passion to make what they make the most expensive they can make it. And that's the difference. Reiterate. You know, it's okay, it's shiny, it's aluminium instead of plastic, and it's three times the price of anything else on the market. But it doesn't offer anything. And I think what I get more upset about is the fact that people get sucked into it rather than. And as you said, it is that mindset that, hey, it's the best. and It should be the best. For the price you're paying, it should be the best. It the reality be is it's not. It you know? yeah, it's not. It's the same. Yeah, well, and that, that's, as good as and that's yeah. my issue. It, it's, it's, I can go and buy a $125 phone from China that is twice the processing power, twice the storage, bigger screen, ba- bigger battery life, dual SIM cards, you know, and it's going to well, be fast upon superior. Once time, you couldn't. Once upon a time, if you went and bought something from China, it'd be rubbish. Yeah. But the technology well, has come far enough forward yeah, to do that. That's one way in Xiaomi. Yeah. Well, they're some of the biggest, like their uh, per person phones. They're some of the highest turnover phones in the world now. Yep. Mm. You know, it's it's just it's not just Apple and Samsung anymore. It, it's all these other players, and Samsung is realizing that they are innovating to the point that it's keeping them far enough in front. What's that? this is what I'm saying though? Where's Apple going to be in five years' time? What are they just going to release the iPhone 15 that's not going to fit in your back pocket anymore? Yep. You know, like <laughs> what? What's their end goal? What's their end game? Is it just to keep pulling money out of people for as long as they can before people wake up to it, or do they have some Strategy. sort of plan? You know, like what? What are they doing? It's a lot of loyal yeah. customers. It's very hard yeah. to but be honest. But there's not anymore. It's not, not like there was. And this is what I'm saying. All the major corporations, they're losing. They're losing Disney Pixar. They're losing all these um, contracts they had with server farms. They're losing all this other stuff because they don't have a product anymore to fill that need. Yeah. It's got to be hurting them. Just because you they're still what? the most rich company doesn't mean they're going to continue that way. You know what's funny, Will? You mentioned BlackBerry before. They're, um, they filed a lawsuit against yeah. Facebook yes. and WhatsApp and Instagram saying they infringe on BlackBerry's messaging app patents. I saw that. I read that. Yeah. The core of BlackBerry's complaint, which is sprawling 117 pages, is the company's proprietary and patent-protected messaging product, BlackBerry Messenger, collo- known colloquially as BBM, is a cornerstone of the modern mobile communications BlackBerry is now contending this is in, this in, intellectual property has been infringed upon by Facebook using a number of the innovative security user interface and functionality enhancing features that made BlackBerry's product such a critical and commercial success in the first place. You think this is how they're going to make money from now on is suing people over patents? Well, it's got to be the only it's way they can make money, way. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they sell 12 pounds a year. I mean, it's not that, not doing that way anymore. <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, it kept Palm alive for a few years, didn't it? <laughs> you got to, you got to uh, give them a head off the trying, don't you? It says yeah. their patents cover cryptographic techniques to produ- protect user privacy. Well, that's unique. Nobody uses cryptographic. Well, they were one of they, and that's, as far as I know, they still are. They certainly were the most secure phone on the market, and that that was one of the reasons they were used by governments and commercial institutions and places like South Africa and and places like that where phone taps were commonplace. Blackberries were one of the most prolific phones because of that end-to-end encryption. And then Blackberry um, was forced by the countries to hand over the private keys. Yeah, the, the, the back doors, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what killed them. That was it. Once they handed that over, that was it. Yeah. That was the end of Blackberry. That was, that was the one thing they had that no totally. other manufacturer had. And they went, oh, yeah, here, no worries. Just have these keys. And then everyone went, well, screw you. You think that's maybe why <laughs> Apple is fighting so much when they have these mass shootings and stuff? And they're like, oh, we totes got the phone. Can you just unlock this? They're like, no. Because we saw what happened with BlackBerry when they started yep. undoing un- crypto. Well, that's why Apple mm. doesn't want... I mean, Apple never says that you can't easily unlock their phone. Apple just says they won't unlock your phone. It's actually a very simple process. Either. That's they right. Prove, prove that they wouldn't. 
Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not the fact that you can't. It's actually not that hard. And anybody with a USB cable can do it. But it's the fact that they're saying they won't do it, which I have to admit I give them credit for because yep. they, it's, they, 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 I mean, they're happy enough to spy on you. If you've ever read the terms and conditions of iTunes, it does screen capturing, it does motion capture, it does a whole lot. Like iTunes is a full-on spy based software but when it comes to Android they want to be on the consumer side don't they that's right exactly you know they don't want that they just want to say hey we stood up for you that one time remember yeah (laughs) yeah you got any other stories there Jordan Ooh, I've got a few um you were talking about um AI before I've got this interesting one I think was AI related uh new technology developed in Australia is set to wipe out cheating at the self-service checkouts since the scanners were first introduced almost a decade ago, customers have been abusing them. Yeah, we know that. Largely by... Is that physically it. or... <laughs> <laughs> you stupid machine, I don't have an unexpected <laughs> item in the bagging compartment. Largely by putting expensive items through through as much cheaper products. Recently, a man was, fi- uh, was fined $326,000 for a self-serve checkout scan, um, scam sorry, involving expensive meat scanned as cheap fruit. Um, and a Queensland mum was given a, a suspended sentence for an elaborate self-service checkout scam that enabled her to steal $4,500 in groceries from Coles and Woolies using uh, photocopied barcodes from two-minute noodles. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. You got to be pre- <laughs> trying to awesome. But an automated uh, product a recognition system that has been developed by an Aussie startup company, damn you, Aussie startup company, <laughs> Um, will end the ability for customers to uh, exploit the machines. Um, or is it Tilita or Tilita technology? I don't know if that's how you say it. Tilita technology has developed the brains to drive smart checkouts, which automatically identifies a product so customers can't cheat the system. It also removes the need for barcodes or having to enter additional information. Oh. Uh, co-founder Chris Sampson said the technology uses a camera to identify identify the product and then automatically enters the information into the point of sale system. It's based on a machine learning and artificial intelligence, which has been taught to recognize different types of fruit and other products. He told the news or news.com.au. Now the big value to supermarket is removing the significant loss seen from people entering the wrong information when using self-serve checkouts. (laughs) I thought that was a pretty great story. What what you they didn't what they didn't say is barcode. I have to remember that from a two minute noodles <laughs> packet. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they. I, I don't understand where they're getting this Australian. It might be an Australian product. This one, but Sweden or Germany has been New doing Zealand it for a long had time. A shopping trolley. Yeah, they had the actual unit mounted to the shopping trolley, and every time you placed an item in the shopping trolley, it identified it and knew what it was. Yeah, that's um, what we read that. News report here on for the New Zealand, I think it was, wasn't it, Jace? I think it's it. Is. Yeah, but I something mean, like I know that. Sweden or something's had it as well, but it's yeah. it's not that new. And not only that, I mean, the fridges we're talking about this a few weeks ago have got cameras in the fridges now, so they can scan what's in the fridge and they can itemize what's in there and they can order for you. So this whole product tracking thing isn't new. I get why they're doing it, but I don't understand why they're doing it now. Why didn't they do that 10 years ago when self-service they, checkouts were introduced? Because the technology the, was there. They haven't had the self-serve checkouts for a while, have they? They, they haven't, haven't had, had the self-serve long. checkouts long enough to realise how much money it actually cost them. And how much they lose. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Our yeah. stock takes out by $25 money. million this year. I wonder why. They're um, save your money in checkout chicks, but not save your money in... But no. sales for two-minute noodles have gone through the roof. <laughs> yeah, we better order some more two minute noodles. I mean, marketing campaign. I know, I know, I don't know why you do. That. I know people have done things like um, using ginger, for example, in a mushroom bag or something like that, because ginger is quite expensive and mushrooms are cheap. You know, like stuff like that. That's not. But I don't understand. Like, if, it's not half obvious if you've just bought three thousand dollars worth of two minute noodles. It's it's a little <laughs> obvious that the troll is not full of two minute noodles. I mean, there's got to. If you're going to rot the system, rot the system intelligently. Over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. she must. It makes you wonder how they do it. They must just like hold the, kind of hold the bar, the photocopied barcode as they swipe it or something. I don't know. Be well, some, they would be skillful. Most they of them got it tattooed on the back of her hand. They, they, just, just, yeah, they need to work at the casino with the cards and stuff. Well, most of them now <laughs> have disabled the weight checking in the baggage order because it never worked, and every you know now most of them don't actually expect you to put the item in the baggage area or they don't wait for it. 
So they've disabled that part of it. So I get that a lot of the things that probably work now. But I mean, the ones where I, I am still big about it. No, uh, doesn't most of them take don't because they don't work in, properly. Take it out, put yeah, it in, put the other one. No, uh, help. Yeah, that's yeah, why they don't do it anymore. Mm. I don't know what's wrong with just hiring. And okay, you've just spent. Let's assume they're ten grand a a, 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 a checkout. That have to be. They've got printers and FPOS and scanners. They have to be ten grand a checkout in there. So you've got six, eight, ten, twelve checkouts there. So you've just spent you know sixty, eighty, hundred and twenty grand on checkouts. So when you're paying some fourteen-year-old minimum wage, how long does it take to make one hundred twenty grand? You know, like I don't understand this logic. Um, and the other thing I don't understand is that the OG, they've got it at the Drakes down the road here, but nobody ever uses the automatic checkouts. Everybody stands in line at the checkouts. It's really funny because they'll be literally they'll have all six manual checkouts open and not one person there. They'll have like three people at the service desk doing the 12 items or less and they'll have one register on. Then all of a sudden everybody finishes, it's really weird here, everybody finishes shopping at the same time and there's like <laughs> nine people standing at the one checkout and then suddenly yeah. staff come running from everywhere to open the other checkout. So it's, so people here are like, we just won't use them. We don't come here to do it ourselves. We, we come here for you protest. to do it. Yeah, yeah. Protest well, by, by it's using not, the checkout chip. Yeah, it's kind of a an unintentional like, I don't think anybody consciously thinks but most the thinks that but the right, vast nobody majority consciously people, thinks that's <laughs> the problem with society today <laughs> the, the vast majority of the people that use the self or use the drakes here they're either um, farmers like out of town farmers or Maybe. they're or they're elderly so the, the the people don't want to use them because they probably one don't understand them and secondly they don't want to pack their own stuff in the trolley they, they want someone else to do it wants for to them. have a chat with the checkout person yeah it's exactly funny our, our, it's funny our coles down here is flat out with the with, with the virtual machines or the self yeah. yeah. machine if i got a woolies at yamanto which is a 15 minute drive that way they they that's all they have they, their self-service just constantly going nuts yeah. But they need to get rid of the ones here. that take take notes and coins because so often I turn up to go to the self service checkout and there's two or three people waiting because the only ones that are available are credit card mach only machines and then you have to push past people they're like what do you go look there's three open there yeah but I've you only got me. a fifty dollar note I'm like well let me through because I've got my credit card and I'll scan and I'll be out of here you'll still be here next week. Hmm. They need them to have Alexa's eagle, evil laugh. That's what they need. <laughs> <laughs> Walking through. Yeah, I hate... That would brighten up my day if I was the shopping there. The bloody coin mechs are useless. The note mechs these days, you put the note in, it spits it back out. You put the note in, it spits it back out. You take the note out, and you fold it around, you twist it around, you put it back in, it spits it back out. You, you're like, you spend 15 minutes trying to make the stupid note. Take the money in, what? <laughs> <laughs> And actually, it's funny. When the new $5 notes came out, it's the first time in history... Where Coinmax would no longer accept existing currency. Every Coinmax in ATMs, in pokey machines, in checkouts, in vending machines had to be changed out to accept the new note. Um, so that I was had a that massive. To me the other day with the ten dollar note that was annoying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, not all of those have been programming because they're only fairly new as well. But they actually had to physically change the Mex to a different a different Mex. So the mass outlay on infrastructure on CoinMex that haven't been touched in 20 or 30 years suddenly being updated must have been insane. Yeah, this one was for me was just one of those car wash change machines. It must have oh, yeah, a lot of those won't be done for a while. Put a $10 note in and it's like, huh? What's, What's this? <laughs> I needed, I needed Alexa's evil laugh then. They're expecting have... a paper one, were they? Yeah. One of the days hey, where you could get the... Uh, Go to the the game arcade and get a straw and just push it down the coin mech till you trigger the little the little lever in there and get your credits. <laughs> ding 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 ding! Five hundred yeah, credits. Used, okay, I'm here for that, the day. That was the early way. I used to do that, and then they updated to optical um, scanners because they were the full mechanical ones. They're just expecting a coin to drop, and there was a chute that would only take the right size coin. So your coin would drop, hit the trigger, and drop it down on a micro switch. So you get straw in there and you run the straw down to you toggle the micro switch. That was easy. So then they got rid of that. They bought in the optical ones, which were looking for exactly the same thing. They were looking for a flash to go past them, so it triggered the coin. So you'd get the piezo igniters out of the barbecues and you'd run two leads down in there and you'd just sit there and spark it till you sparked it in the right spot and you'd trigger <laughs> the coins that way. And then they started to get smart with actual proper recognition mechs and stuff. But yeah, the early on mechs. So you tie a bit of spring around it and drop it down in there. Click. 
Yeah, well, no, that didn't work because they they got one way drop in them, so that would actually get jammed. Um, but the he used to work in the arcades in the early days, and the amount of times he'd go around to a machine, and people had been on these machines all day. He'd walk around, he'd pull the coin hopper out, and the coin hopper's empty, and he's just like. <laughs> Especially when things like Daytona first came out. Daytona was like $4 a game when it Daytona first came out, which is unheard of. Oh, I spent a lot of money. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I actually preferred Sega Rally. I used to be able to clock <laughs> Sega Rally. Well, Oculus Rift on, Virtual Reality. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oculus Rift Virtual Reality headsets around the world are experiencing an outage, including devices in Polygon. Users are not sure what's causing the issue, and so far neither Facebook nor Oculus has itself provided a solution. One place where users experiencing the issues are gathering is on the Oculus forums. Uh, user Apex Master booted up his computer, tried to open the Oculus app, and was greeted with an error indicating the software could not reach the Oculus runtime service. The same error is cropping up on computers all around the world, including several at the company. Once it has appeared, there's no way to restart the Oculus, Oculus app, which renders the Rift headset unusable. If you can get the uh, Oculus application to open up, but uh, update of the software appeared to be hung, and it turns out that um, Oculus had a security certificate, and it's expired, and hmm. uh, they didn't have an update. So until you, they've made a new certificate and uh, have made it available to everyone so that you could update it into your Oculus Rift, uh, there's nothing you can do. You can't use it at all. Well, that's not a bad thing. I mean, there's people out there who probably haven't been unplugged for six months, so, you know, go out and get some sun for a while. <laughs> well, that's what it is. It could have been something. It could have been something worse, couldn't it, really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know. Well, if that, you've ever sort of watched... That was, that shouldn't happen. If you've ever, ever read, a, read a book or on Audible um, called Snow Crash, um, yep. same sort of deal. They used to... They'd, they'd, be immersed in their in their virtual world, and somebody figured out a way to uh, show you like a business card. They'd walk up to you and they'd show you this business card in the, in the game, and it would literally like rewire your brain. Like the game would see it, and then it would trans transcode it to something your eyes would see, which would actually physically mess your real brain up in the real world. Wow! So, yeah, brain and, hack. Yeah, that's basically uh, um, basically what it was. But I mean, something like that. If you technically, it's possible. I suppose something like that to happen. And it's kind of scary. This book was written know, fifteen years ago or something, and it's gradually actually getting closer and closer. The reality and these books are getting closer. Like Neil Neil Stevenson does some amazing stuff. Uh, Diamond Age, um, Snow Crash, uh, Cryptonomicon. Yeah, and they're all slowly actually merging into this real world storyline. You're like, uh, okay, it's getting a little close for comfort now. <laughs> you get you excited that uh, Ready Player One will be coming out soon? Oh, I've got a. That reminds me, I've got to update my Audible subscription. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go see it at the movies. It should be good. Yeah, I'll. I don't know. I'll. Mm, I'm going to wait for it to come out and, and let other people see it first. I, I don't want it to be bad. I want it to be good. Yeah. So it, it looks good, but it's one of those movies I'm just like, I'm really hesitant to... I, I really want it to be that good that I don't want to see it in case it's not. <laughs> oh, 20, 29th of March, the same day that the uh, C64 Mini comes out. There's two cool things happening. Oh, man. How are you going to work yeah. that? <laughs> Get but anyway, that could that way that could work out as if as you're walking in the cinema, they're handing out the C64 minis. Isn't it? <laughs> Why not? It's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> you got any more news stories to finish up with? Uh, just quickly, and I find this slightly ironic because we're talking about this before the show. Um, Dropbox is once again expanding its edge network to boost file access speeds. The cloud storage vendor said it plans to launch six new points of presence across North America and Europe to improve performance and reliability for users globally. Uh, over the next several months, Dropbox will turn on points of presence in Atlanta, Denver, Berlin, Toronto, followed by Stockholm and Oslo in the second half of the year. By the end of the 2018, Dropbox expects to have an infrastructure footprint that spans 29 facilities in 12 countries, four continents including North America, Europe, Asia and Australia. Um, I'll say what they're doing and how they're doing it and um, the infrastructure using and stuff like that. The reason I find this ironic is before the show... I yep. decided to grab some files off Dropbox to top and tail, or top and tail, so to put the intros and the outros on this episode. 
Yep. Except that uh, Dropbox wouldn't load. It just refused oh. to load any files on Dropbox at all. So <laughs> this infrastructure boost couldn't come at a better time, if you ask me. Have you, have you tried <laughs> switching it off and on again? What, Dropbox? Yeah. <laughs> Please yeah, just restart, restart your server. <laughs> Just restart. Yeah, just message him. I'm have to restart. I can't access my my Drop server. Box, you need to restart. Can't get in. Uh, but how about you, uh, Jordan? Any to finish up? Any stories? Um, back to the guessing. Uh, hang on, quick flick. I had about four of them here that I haven't done yet. Uh, I probably should have had a look before I did this. <laughs> um, while you're fine, that just quickly. I was yeah, using fine, um. Yeah. The I bought a set of uh, Google, well, they're not cardboard, but they're a VR headset for your phone, mm-hmm. and um, they're normally like eighty bucks, and they came on sale at like fifteen bucks. I thought oh, for fifteen bucks, nice. I've got to buy a set. Eh? And I've got yep. an old note floating around that fits perfectly in there, and it's great. It's so I bought a Bluetooth hand control, thumb controller, so I can actually move around the stuff in there. It's actually for having. For what it is, for being a cheap fifteen dollar unit with yep. effectively an old phone that's just laying around, um, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I I'm do recommend. The batteries haven't died on that old phone, so that you can't use it again. No, see the thing about the old phones is the batteries are replaceable, unless it's an iPhone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I was really surprised. The like the demos that come with like there's a roller coaster demo and stuff. Oh, pretty cool. My favorite there's Minecraft in 3D and there's all sorts of stuff. But my favorite thing at the moment, I don't know if you ever saw. There's a game. It was called uh, Crazy Goat, I think it was called. And you would run around and headbutt buses. Goat and Simulator. And, yeah, Goat Simulator. Goat Simulator. Goat Simulator. Well, it's called Crazy Goat on the on the Android, and it's the same thing. But the thing is, wherever you look, the goat runs. So you start the goat running, and you look at around. This goat's just running around, running through fences, and running over. Out of all the games there is to play, <laughs> that one's the most fun one. <laughs> I'll have to so, see if it's out for the year VR. I haven't used that in about a year now. <laughs> it's so lame, but it's so much fun. Now I've got to ask you, Will, before I get on to that other story. Um, yes, sir. You're talking about Dropbox, right? What, what's yes, your favourite? What's your favourite cloud? Have you, got uh, you prefer? Most of mine is Google, Google Drive generally, uh, but it depends on what you're talking about too. Um, I use Google no, Drive meant- because we integrate. Like we use Google Drive at work, and it's just, and I've always just sort of used it, and everything's there because I've been in the Google infrastructure so long. Um, but I use Dropbox. Not as much, but we do use Dropbox. Um, but you're right, there are a lot out there. And I was actually looking at some the other day to transfer some bigger files. Um, but yeah, for, yeah, me, it's, phone, for me, it's my Google phone Drive. keeps popping up. Sign up and use uh, OneDrive on the phone, and we'll give you 100 yeah. gigs. The problem with that, it only lasts 12 months, and then you've got to pay for it. That's why I didn't do it. <laughs> That's right. That's a lot of people yeah. got caught out with Dropbox when Dropbox did that too. Tell your mates, put us on Facebook, do this, and we'll give you 12 months of unlimited I did storage. All of that. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end yeah, of 12 Mega, months ago, hmm. Mega NZ did the same thing. You know, you give, I think it's 50 meg to sign up, or oh, sorry, 50 hmm. gig to sign up, and then you get another 15 gig to install the app and another 20 gig if you install the <clears> stink, this stink application the, on your PC. I have to admit, the one thing that bugs me with Google Drive as opposed to Dropbox is there is limitations on what files you can upload. You can't upload yep. EXEs, you can't upload ZIPs, you can't upload RISE, you can't upload 7-ZIPs, you can't upload a heap of these different files, anything that could potentially contain a virus, which is annoying because like, if I want to send some photos to myself, I'd normally zip them, throw them in there and do it, but now I've got to upload them individually because I can't zip them anymore. Um, yep. One would think so that if you're you sharing you a... Pro- is that what you said? Yeah, it won't let you upload it. It says this is a potentially hazardous file and it won't let you really? physically upload it. Yeah. That's it's a relatively are you new thing. sharing it to yourself? Yeah. And that's what bugs what about me. If a I was. File? No, the can't do file? it. Yep. 7 zip, all any that can't do it. Any compressed file you can't upload. Uh, any executable file, pretty much. Um, even a lot of JPEG. I ended up having to recall, rename it a. Um, a JPEG or something to get it to upload it. But then the other problem is the things like. There's limitations on file sizes for PDFs and things like that because they're sort of saying if the file's bigger than this in a PDF, it's most likely a virus. I'm like, but hang on. I'm uploading it to my own private box. But and I'm the only one who's going to 
it, yeah, it's not like I'm making it a public file. It, it's it's a private file. If it's public, if okay, it's I understand. If you get a PDF that's free at 12 meg, it's usually something, a big document or something you would think would Well, be. I've got some PDFs that are workshop manuals, um, and they're 125 meg each or yeah. something. You know, I would it's have not thought un- viruses would be small, like, you know, in the kilobytes. Well, exactly. Um, but I think, I don't know, I don't... hundred And it's relatively new. It was never a thing. It's only something they've recently introduced. And it does kind of bug me. Uh, that's probably the one thing that I, I really suddenly have disliked. Google, about you're Google pushing Drive. him to OneDrive. You're pushing him to OneDrive. Well, that's a really big That's a really big damper on Google's behalf. Isn't it? I never knew mm. that, but that is a big damper. That makes me, I would think twice if I was looking at clouds, I, I wouldn't even bother with Google for that reason. There's no. So many. Yeah, well, there is so many. Part of the problem is whatever you... It's a bit of a letdown. I think the main thing, whatever you choose, you need it to be multi-platform, you need it to be readily available and you need to be able to access it from multi, from like not just an app or not just a browser or not just you want to be able to access it from multiple different points and i don't mean like have multiple things logged in at the same time i mean you know, I, wish they, I, I wish they were all able to do web dev and ftp and things like that that would be great for me well but. if oh, i'd love one of them to be able to do it and if anything could do ftp that was also a regular style interface that would be fantastic yeah, um, I don't think there's any to do it, is there? There was I, one, I remember. There, there was one back in the day, and I don't know if it was amalgamated into Dropbox. I have a thing suspicion it there was. There was one called X Drive that I used a long time ago. <clears throat> yeah. Was that, it might have been the one I'm thinking of that got amalgamated into Dropbox, but you there was one. Map a, map a drive on your computer called X Drive yeah. to their server and whatever you mm. put in there, get on their server. I always expected Google to do that. You know, they got 95% of the way of doing that. All yeah. they had to do was implement that mapping feature because then it would be perfect. You literally just use it as a hard drive. Um, yep. they, I don't understand why they didn't just go that little bit further to it do kind that. Of, it kind of is when it's a folder anyway. It's just not in you, not under my computer, is it, really? It's not in you. But it's not mappable, which means if it's not mappable, it's, it's not, not like I can't go yeah, save to... to the website and upload. Yeah, I can't go save to you know Z drive slash... G drive. You know, G, whatever. No, yeah, I already right, got a G drive. You know, yeah, so you, it's you, not not you quite. Context menu editors where you're you can, able, yeah, you and can, there is actually also a browser extension that allows it to. There's a browser extension that allows it to uh, to work like that as well. But it's not. I don't want that because if I hop onto another computer, it's not the same thing. I just want it to work right. like that out of the box. You know, standard. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I stopped using Dropbox because there's a while there where Dropbox, if I was logged in on my phone. And I was doing something on my phone in Dropbox, and then went to my PC to log in. It would it would either complain that I was logged in on my phone and wouldn't let me log in. I had to log out off my phone. So if I left my phone, you know, somewhere else, or I left it in the car, or left it at work, I couldn't log into my Dropbox on my PC because my phone was logged in. So yeah. that was a thing. I mean, it's probably a few years ago now, but that's what turned me off Dropbox. And I went to Google Drive. But now that Google Drive is doing this funky thing with these extensions, eh, I may just go back to Dropbox. Hmm. Well, wonder if you find a story. Yeah, I did have it in front of me. It's um. I'll try and make it a quick one. Um, the release of Windows 10 Redstone 5 build 17618 uh, for yep. users enrolled in the the skip ahead ring of the Windows Insider program brought uh, brought back sets a feature that Microsoft first tested during the development of Redstone 4, and which uh, was then temporarily removed for further improvements. Um, this new build, however, comes with a series of changes um, as compared to the previous implementation of sets. Uh, and the biggest addition is the, in, is the integration of support for Windows 32 software, or Win32 software, I should say. Uh, sets was originally developed uh, to work with universal Windows platforms, um, apps from the Microsoft Store, but uh, this build introduces full support for Win32 programs as well, which means that File Explorer the built-in file manager uh, finally gets tabs. Uh, Tabs in file, yeah, (laughs) tabs in file explorer has been one of the most, if not uh, most requested features in Windows. And while Microsoft appeared to be ignoring the feedback, it looks like the software giant was actually working on such functionality, only that it planned more advanced options. With sets, uh, first party experiences uh, like Mail, Calendar, OneNote and MSN uh, News, Windows and Microsoft Edge became more uh, integrated to create a seamless experience so you could get 
back to what was important and be productive, uh, recapturing the moment, saving time. Uh, we believe that's true, uh, at the, the true value of sets. Additional app integration with sets is expected over time. I wasn't really going to be talking about sets, but it was just more to the point that they're bringing back the tabs. I heard you giggle on it. I thought that was yeah. really good for yeah. for. <laughs> Yeah. Ram it on a bit there, but for File Explorer to have tabs, I think it'd be great. Anyone remember X Tree Gold? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> and X Tree Bold, X Tree Bold, yeah, and a uh, Wintry. Um, yeah, Wintry. yeah, no, I think I think that is actually ironically one. I mean, that was available in Windows three point one. If you think about well, it, effectively, well, it was a commander. set of tabs. Well, yeah, commander. exactly. Um, yeah. And that was actually a really good feature. I actually quite liked that. And they only got rid of it for 15 years. So I mean... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't things, remember it. But... The other things available in the uh, new Microsoft uh, Microsoft stores or the Microsoft Windows 10 S subsystem store, whatever they want to call it, um, they're actually finally allowing uh, Linux. They've got uh, Debian, Kali Linux, and a few others all going on there as well. So they're actually putting Linux onto their, onto their Windows Store, which given that Good. Windows is written under oh, Linux, I'm not surprised. So yep. what? So you can install it as a kind of in a shell or something, Guest, is what you're saying? Guest operating yeah, system. Yeah, you'd, you'd use it as a... Linux. Yeah. They've got um, Linux so it's, bash because, shell and stuff is being integrated into Windows over the last couple of updates. You, you yeah. could already do that, yeah. But now they're putting it to the App Store so that it's easier for people to just go, yeah. hey. Yep. Pretty cool. Well, it also means that it, it also means you could, I suppose, if you wanted to, you could dual boot as well. You wouldn't just have to run it under an emulator. You could actually dual boot. I would imagine. But you if you wanted more the more performance out of it, you could run those Linux applications, though, couldn't you? From or Linux applications from the yep. yeah, machine. yeah, um, and that has been one thing. That, virtual machine under Windows running Linux has been horrid, but ironically running Windows under virtual machine running Linux is fine. <laughs> it's, it just yeah. never like going, it yeah, just never like going the other way for some reason. So now you can run, uh, you can run um, Linux on your Mac desktop to run Windows if you wanted to. <laughs> 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 so yeah, but um, that, it, it just goes to show you like as much as, they try to get away from their roots. At the end of the day, Windows is just another, and so is Mac OS. It's just another version of Linux, really. It just happens to I be. I didn't a, think it was. I always thought it was written from the ground up to be different. So it shows what I know. I always thought that it was a different language completely. Windows compared to. The only difference yeah. is it's a source, not an open source. So you don't you get, don't get to see the uncompiled. But I bet you, if you looked at the uncompiled script, it wouldn't be any different than any other Linux code out there. Yeah. Right. I've always I've always heard that you know Mac is is built on Unix or whatever, but I never knew that. Darwin OS. Yep. But yeah. Mm. I mean, probably the the. I mean, it, it always loaded under DOS, but I mean, even really, DOS was just a an overlay. I used to love it back when Windows Windows Two was a thing. Going back to being of old fart geeks, when Windows oh, two right. came, it was either Windows one or Windows two. No, Windows one was purely text based. I think Windows two was the first of the graphic infrastructure. And if you did something, say you loaded Calculator, you would see the DOS prompt in the background scrolling uh, Calculator.exe. Yep. Then it popped. Then it popped the Calculator GUI up over the top of the DOS prompt. I thought it was, it was brilliant. They actually yeah. probably they need to bring something like that back in. I thought it was a really good way of connecting. All of a sudden, I feel doing. young again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good way of connecting what you're doing at the PC. Two G. The whole Windows was just like a File Explorer extension yeah. that launched DOS. Apps. I remember trying out yep. three point one once before, just on a, an old machine for a bit of fun, but never, never even. There's actually you can actually use three point one on. There's a uh, Java emulator on a web browser that lets you go and log back in and use Windows three point one. Oh, yeah. It's actually it's actually really cool. Um, and ironically, I still have it's a dad's place, and it still works. Last time I was down there, I fired it up. I have a compact three eight six SX twenty five uh, workstation with um, four meg of RAM and a uh, two fifty six K Trident Turbo three D video card, and <laughs> it huge. has a fourteen four uh, internal hardware modem, not a Win modem. And it was my email server for years. It has a 50 meg quantum hard drive in it, and it has wow. a 
um, it has a 2.88 meg floppy drive for those who remember those. Wow. And um, it has been sitting at Dad's place. Well, I haven't lived at home since '95. And it's been sitting there since '95 in the cupboard. And last time I was down there at Christmas time, I pulled it out of the cupboard, turned it on, it complained about a flat BIOS battery because I actually pulled the BIOS battery out so it wouldn't corrode. Oh, so um, Apple was right. The battery will die after time. <laughs> no, no, it didn't yeah. die. It just wasn't there. Um, so I, I, it's not planned. I pulled that it's out. It's not planned. I plugged it in, turned it on with my uh, my old VGA IBM monitor that I have. <laughs> And my I, IBM PS2 mechanical keyboard, and it loaded straight up into Windows, loaded straight up into the into the Outlook, into the um, I can't remember what the program was, into the mail program anyway, and sitting there and trying to receive emails. I'm like, this thing's been sitting in a cupboard for, you know, ten years, fifteen years, and it's just still sitting there waiting to do its job. Eudora, <laughs> my, my, Eudora. My memory goes That's probably what it was. Yeah. Probably, you know, pulling my hair out trying to get the networking working. In a, in oh, the good old BNC networking. Windows, yeah, Windows 95, 98. I remember I could sit there for hours just trying to get two. We used to have serial cables uh, when I was in a share house oh. with friends and there'd be a long one that goes from my computer all the way up the hallway into the next guy's room so we could play uh, Descent. Descent. Oh, Descent. I saw Our Descent. best favourite one at the time. And while you're doing that, you've got some do- some dodgy laplink cable on the parallel cord so you can transfer files yeah. on the... <laughs> Yeah, now, wasn't the internet, so it wasn't the internet it. originally invented for you know for the old fogies back then to send you know well no but maybe not old fogies but to send uh, you know ASCII porn yeah ASCII porn yeah well, it was it was it was originally invented for the military then it very quickly became uh, BBS <laughs> based it was all BBS based porn sharing yeah. yeah so and then they realised that we could we could do more than just look at porn on that. Yeah, we can interact with porn on that. <laughs> <laughs> with celebrity heads on them. Yeah. yeah. Bring out, bring out the 25... Take, it, might take, it might take four hours to download one image, and that's a lot of waiting, but... Progressive JPEGs. The, yeah, <laughs> progressive JPEGs and four-frame GIFs from GeoCities for the win. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, thanks you for know, listening. Site under construction. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little digger dude. Uh <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Aussie Tech Heads show broadcast weekly. We can be found at facebook.com slash Aussie Tech Heads, twitter.com slash Aussie Tech Heads, and youtube.com, you guessed it, slash Aussie Tech Heads. You can email us, Will Jordan or Warlock at aussietechheads.com.au. You can hear the Aussie Tech Heads on aussietechradio.com, 24 7 back to back play of some of the best tech related shows from around Australia and New Zealand. New shows added each Friday. Thanks for listening. Click subscribe, comment, and stuff, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See ya.